Pray with me, church. Oh, gracious God, we come once again to say thank you. Thank you to Heavenly Father for another opportunity to come and to preach your word. Now go with us today, dear Heavenly Father, when your word is preached. Help it to not to come back void. You have promised us that. So if there's anyone here today that are out of the ark of safety, if anyone here needs to rededicate their life, let something be said today that will prick their hearts and tear down the stony ground around that heart and put in a heart of love. Go with us and bless us today, Lord, in Jesus' name. After I have preached to others, help me not to become a castaway. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We call your attention uh, this morning to Paul's epistle to the Galatians, I'm sorry, to the Ephesians, to the Ephesians, Paul's letters to the Ephesians. We would look at chapter one and we would lift up two verses in chapter one from the book of Ephesians. Those of you that have your Bibles, you find these words in chapter 1 of Ephesians, verses 13 and verse 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. This morning, we will use a theme, seal. Just one word this morning, seal, S-E-A-L, just seal. There's always a confusion uh, in the church, I have taught Sunday school for many years. The Lord blessed me to have one of the larger Sunday school classes at my other church. There always this question that came up about losing our salvation. And what does the issue of seal mean? Well, in my study this week, one of my favorite theologians, D. Martin Lloyd Jones, stated that this issue, these two verses, are vital to the Christian understanding of salvation. He said if there was anything that he had to state that was vital for Christians to learn and for Christians to understand, it would be these two verses that I lifted up this morning. When do we come uh, to this issue of seal? Chiquita always put a seal on its bananas, but they just don't produce bananas. They produce other fruit as well. But uh, Chiquita Brand International Incorporated is the name of the company. And they say that uh, Jaquita probably throw away as many bananas as they put their seal on. Because it's very important that when they put their seal on the banana, that the banana represents them. And when you pick up a banana in the grocery store, I'm not talking about after you've had it in your house for two weeks. I'm talking about when you pick up a banana in the grocery store, that has the Chiquito seal on it. They want to know that you're getting a first class banana. <laughs> Am I right about it? But a lot of bananas didn't make the seal. Uh, I just want you all to know that. And sometimes when you buy cologne and perfume, you have to break that seal before you can get to the fragrance that's inside of the bottle. Uh, so when we look at this issue of sealing, uh, guess what? When we come to Christ, 
The scriptures say that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. So there's going to be a cracking, there's going to be an opening at the day of redemption of those of us who are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And it's important that we understand that. Now in this first verse, verse number 13, in order to understand verse number 13, we first have to look at that last part of verse number 12. The last part of verse number 12, that B part said, whom first trusted in Christ. They're talking about the Jew. So now when we come down to verse 13, they're going to shift and they're going to be talking about uh, the Gentiles. Uh, it says in verse 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. It's talking about that these Gentiles now trust God after they heard the word of truth, just like the Jews did. They said, now, now you trusted in him, and because you are now trusting in God, talking about the Gentiles, since you are now trusting in God, and you have heard the gospel of truth, the gospel of your salvation, now that you are able to trust in him, in whom also, after you believe, see, in whom also, Pay attention to that also because there, there has already been some other folk that's been sealed by the spirit of promise. He said, whom also, after you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now let's talk about something because we need to understand this Holy Spirit of promise. Yes, this spirit had been promised to the Jews, but now since the Gentiles have heard the word and they believe it for their salvation, now it's going to be reconciled. It's going to be carried now over to the Gentiles because in, in, in Acts chapter 1, it, in, in chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, it says, And in being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father that he shall come hence, that you have heard from me, and this promise is going to come to you. In verse 5 it says, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He said, Now John truly baptized with water, but now you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost of promise many days from now. And we all know in the book of Acts, in the next chapter, we had the day of Pentecost. Now, 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 now pay attention because uh, this is when the Holy Spirit came. But you see, the disciples had already received the Holy Spirit. He had already told the disciples long before this, he said, now you receive when he was with them. Now, now you receive the Holy Spirit. But, 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 but now what he's doing here, he is allowing the Holy Spirit to come upon all flesh as it had been prophesied. So, so, so now he's talking about this Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, so today I will teach that the seal is God's authentic, authentication of the fact that we really belong to him. The seal is when God authenticates that we really belong to him. Uh, now when we look at this issue uh, of seal, because I'm pretty sure that we understand that this promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, now you see the thing about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit didn't first come up on God's people on the day of Pentecost. Because in the Old Testament, I hope you all don't mind me just teaching a little bit here this morning, because you, you got to understand this, because you got to be able to get the first base. Because you see, some of the Old Testament prophets uh, as we see like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, and all of the rest, even David, the, the biggest thing that David uh, was so upset about that when he had sinned with Bathsheba, he didn't want God to take the Holy Spirit away from him. So, so in order for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of these Old Testament prophets to do what they were called to do, they had to have the Spirit of God within them. Now walk with me for a minute because this Spirit was in them. So it says now, 
we as Christians are all children of Abraham because we are the children of faith. Remember, Abraham had faith, and we are children of Abraham because we need to have the same faith that Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David uh, all were of the kingdom of God. They were all in the kingdom of God. All of these men were in the kingdom of God. A person cannot be in the kingdom of God unless he is a child of God, and you cannot be a child of God unless you are filled with the Spirit. So we, we see here now, in order for you to be in the kingdom of God, you have to be filled with the Spirit. And we see that these Old Testament prophets, the, the Holy Spirit came upon them for a certain dispensation, for a certain thing that they need to do. The Holy Spirit didn't come upon them like it comes upon us today to indwell us and to be with us all the time. But the Holy Spirit came upon these Old Testament prophets uh, so that they could do what God had called them to do. Uh, so we see that. So you say, well, Pastor, what is this issue of sealing? I'm glad you asked that question because it's vital for us to understand it. But first, I need to tell you, before I tell you what sealing is, I first need to tell you what sealing is not. Okay, uh, when we confess Christ, we are indwelled with his spirit. So the sealing is not the indwelling, okay? The sealing, and once we confess and we are indwelled with his spirit, then we are sanctified, we are set apart. So, so then the sealing is not the sanctification. Uh, the sanctification is when we have the fruit of the spirit because we are set aside and that God's spirit produces fruit in us. It produces love, joy, peace, long-suffering and meekness, it produces that in us. So, so once we are sanctified and then we are justified, God has justified us with his spirit. God has appeased, uh, Jesus appeased God's anger. And so now we are justified because God's spirit now is in us. So, so, so the sealing is not justification. And we now have renewed our mind, we are re regenerated. So the sealing is not the ceiling is not when we are regenerated. The spirit is not regeneration. And the spirit is not the feeling. The feeling is God's spirit is filled in us every day. But the feeling of God's spirit is something that we can control. You see, if I don't treat my wife right, the Holy Spirit is quenched within me, and the Holy Spirit cannot be filled within me. But, but you see, the sealing is something that God does, not something that man does, but something that God does. So, so we cannot control uh, God's sealing of us. So, so, so we see now one thing, sealing is not indwelling. Sealing is not sanctification, it's not justification, it's not regeneration, and it's not the feeling on a day-to-day -day basis. Are you all still with me or have you gone to sleep? So how do we know? that we are children of God? Good question. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. The Bible say the brethren, but it's talking about everybody. We know when we love everybody that we are become the children of God, 1 John chapter 3, 14. We know that we are Christians if we keep his commandment, if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. All of these things have happened to us, but you see, just like Jaquita did. They waited until these bananas got ripe, <laughs> and then they put the seal on them. But, but you see, all of these things take place uh, when we confess Christ and we are indwelled, uh, we are sanctified, we are justified, we are regenerated, and we are filled. All of these things have taken place in us. So then the sealing of the Spirit is something additional. The sealing is something additional to us that God does. And God does it. Not to everyone that comes and make this confession, because, you know, a lot of us confess. You know, I was uh, counseling a couple the other day. They had a wedding in the church, and a man gave vows, but he didn't believe none of those vows that he made. Are y'all with me? Folks make many vows. Oh, they dressed up, had a big wedding, suit tucks it. Didn't believe none of it. Like Jesus said, I never knew you. Y'all know about that scripture, right? So we see the, the, the ceiling is when all of these things have taken place in us. 
And we are now doing the work of God. And so we see here the ceiling in the ancient world was when there was a sack or when there was a crate or when it was sent out. They would only seal this thing when these packages was filled and they had to be sent out. And this ceiling was on them for their protection so they wouldn't make it do any harm to them. But not only that, the ceiling showed who they belonged to and where they were going. The ceiling showed that, that protection. Uh, so we see here the document, even when we look at the book of Esther, uh, we can see that the mark of ownership, uh, the mark that will make sure that nothing is, is harm comes to a package is that we put that seal on it. The seal is God's authentication of the fact that we really belong to God. Now let me break it down because in reading the life, in reading the life of John Wesley, in reading the light, life of the great preacher Jonathan Edwards, in reading the life of D.W. Moody, in reading the life of Spurgeon, all of these great preachers, the, the, the thing that happened to them, uh, for D.L. Moody, for instance, D.L. Moody had done many great things for God. He had preached, he had done great things for God. But walking down the street one day in New York City, something overwhelming came upon him. And he couldn't stop crying. He realized that God loved him. He realized that God had been with him. He realized that all of the things that he was doing for God, now, now he realized God had enabled him to do these things, but, but he realized now that he was a child of God and he realized he belonged to God. All of these great men, all of these great theologians, all of these great people, when, when, when the seal of God has come upon you, so when God seals you, that means that you belong to God. That means that, that, that all of the things that you have done and you have done them because God has enabled you to do that. But now God is saying, you are my child. You are my child. So now we can cry, Abba Father. But what does it say in that verse? Because you have the spirit of adoption. See, see, we, we, we forget that part of that scripture. Uh, because we have now the spirit of adoption, we can now cry, Abba Father. You cannot cry, Abba, Father, unless you have that spirit of adoption. That spirit of adoption is God sealing us. So, so now we all know that we are God's child. We know that we belong to God. We know that we belong to God, so now we can cry, Abba, Father, because we now belong to God. And because God has now sealed us with his, with his seal of promise. He has promised that he would do that for us because now we are sealed to the day of redemption and God has put his seal on us and now we belong to God and God knows that we are his children. God knows that we are his children because we love one another. And God can look down at us and he can always see the love of humanity in us. And see, that's the reason we keep trying to get folk in the church to do church stuff, but they ain't got no seal. Jaquita can't send out them kind of bananas. Ja ja if Jaquita got that kind of sense, then we ought to have that kind of sense in the church. We keep, you see, see, once we have been sealed, and once we know that we're children of God, See, the ceiling comes on you. That, and that's why D.W. Moody couldn't stop crying because he realized that God loved him. And you see, once you realize that God loves you, they say 20% of the people in the church are the ones that do the work because those are the ones that got the seal. And when you got the seal, Nobody's got to worry about whether you're going to tithe. Nobody's got to worry about whether you're going to show up for church. Nobody's got to worry about whether you're going to be in the ministry because you know that you belong to God. You know who you, know who you are and you know where you're going. Are you out there? So that's what we need to understand. You don't have to worry about losing your salvation. That Jaquita banana don't have to worry about. Even if you take that seal off, it's still a Jaquita banana because it had the seal on. Right. Hallelujah. 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 So now we can cry. 
So now we can cry out to Almighty God because we now have the spirit of adoption. We are now a child of God. And when you are a child of God, you can approach your father. You can come to Almighty God. And you know if you approach your father, he's not going to give you a stone. He's not going to give you a serpent. He's not going to give you anything that's going to hurt you. So, so that's what it's saying. Once you are a child of God. See, we keep talking to folk. We keep trying to get folk to do stuff that have not been adopted into God's family. They come into the church just like the man that made the vows. He didn't mean absolutely nothing. He said, after the wedding, he went out that same night. He didn't believe in nothing he said, nothing he did. Oh, you all know what I'm talking about? I don't even know why he got married. I asked him that. So we see how there are many people that come. Uh, but the seal is put on the children of God. And when you see that thing about the children of God, in the Bible, we, we're talking about those that have been sealed to the day of redemption. See, we're the ones, we're the ones that's going to be sealed to the day of redemption. And when God redeems us, I spent a lot of time on verse 13, but let me tell you about verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. His seal, that spirit in us, is our down payment into eternity, our down payment for the inheritance that we're going to receive when we get home to be with the Lord. You see, when you buy a house and you put earnest money down on the house, See, the house is taken off the market when you put the earnest money on it. Nobody else should be able to bid on that house because you put that earnest money down, and that earnest money means that because you have put money down on that house is that that house is now reserved for you. The, the, the house is no longer up for sale. You got 60 to 90 days or 45 days or whatever they give you to get the financing. So they're giving you time to do that. But, but now pay attention because, see, once you put that earnest money down on a house, and see, I've had people that put earnest money down on the house and say, well, well, well Pastor Shannon, I put $5,000 down on the house, but, but I, I think I've changed my mind about buying the house. See, see, there's a legal term called specific performance. If you put earnest money down on the house and they take that house off the market for you, then you can be sued and be made to pay what that house costs. So you have to be very careful when you go and put earnest money down that you really want to buy that house because you can end up having to pay a lot more than what you put down because, see, that owner has taken that house off the market for you. Also, it says in Scripture, and John said this, that, that, that Jesus is coming and the one that's coming, I can't even... Uh, unloose the sandals on his, on his feet, but I baptize with water, but he comes and he will be baptizing with fire. Now you see I'm talking about another baptism now. You got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which, is, which will seal you, but now when Jesus comes and baptize with fire, see, see that fire is a baptism of judgment. You're going to be judged also. So that's what John is saying. I'm baptizing you with the water, but the one that's coming to me, he's going to baptize you with a judgment. He's going to judge you with everything you've done in this body, whether it's good or whether it's bad. So we see now that when we're sealed, when we know we're sealed, when we know we're a child of God, you don't have to worry about losing your name, do you? My name is Shannon. I never worried about if I had gone out and done something bad that my dad was going to take his name from me. When I came into the world and they pulled me up and they slapped me on my little bottom and they say, Miss Maggie, you got a boy. And his name is James. And they say, his name is James Shannon. He's a Shannon. He got the seal on him. He's going to be a Shannon to the day that he died. He's going to be a Shannon. You've been sealed. You're a child of God. You ought to act like it. You ought to look like it. You ought to walk like it. I told you about my Shannon walk, didn't I? Hey, hey. 
I used to walk through my community, hey, Miss Davis, how you doing? Because hey. I grew up in the pod projects and everybody sitting on the front porch, hey, y'all. You got to walk like it. You got to talk like it. You see, when Jesus, the first word that he spoke on Calvary, he said, Eli, Eli, lama, sabachthani. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He said, I've had this intimate relationship with you all my life, but now because I bore all the sins on Calvary, you've turned your back on me. But I understand why you've turned your back on me. Because you've turned your back on me, you will never turn your back on Shannon because I understand that you said you will always be with him. You will never leave him, nor will you forsake him. So once he's sealed, he got this possession. He possess you. You own him. He knows where he's going he knows whose he is. He bred in a starving land. He's water in dry places. Hallelujah to God that I serve real. He's a real God and I'm going to tell you every now and then you have to feel him sometimes. I would serve a God that I couldn't feel sometimes. So I hope this lesson today I hope you learned something. And I hope they got it right back there on the recording. Because I've been sealed to the day of promise. And let me just tell you one thing, because once you've been sealed, and D.L. Moody them was testifying to this thing. See, once you see, once you realize that God loves you, and once God seals you, there's some things that you can't do because you love God. You, you, you cannot do these things because you don't have an opportunity. You can't do these things because you love. See, see let me just live it through. See, I don't need another woman in my life because I got my wife. See, I love my wife so much that I'm going to be faithful to her. The vows that I made, I'm going to live out those vows. See, 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 when you love somebody, you're going to be faithful to them. And you, they don't have to worry about you doing things or going places and all that. See, see, when you love God and you realize you're a child of God and God has sealed you, you you're going to be faithful to Almighty God. But not because of anything else, because you realize that the love of God has overwhelmed you. And since the love of God has overwhelmed you, you're going to serve him till the day you die. Amen. Seal to the day of redemption. I hope you receive the word. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for this word today. Now, dear Heavenly Father, go with us and bless us. In Jesus' magnificent name, we pray.